It's there. You must be really hungry. Six o'clock, I call the June 10th, 2024 meeting of the Mexico City Council to order. Roll call, please. Greg. Weber. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Hey. Yes. Uh, I believe we have a presentation on the Teal Lake Phase 2. Uh, Bruce, Mr. Yes, um, as council remembers, uh, we had a Teal Lake Village Phase 1. Uh, it's up, operating, running well. Um, the same folks are looking at a Phase 2, and they've bought the property, and uh, they want to talk to you about what they're looking to do. So, Rita, do you have anything else you want to add, or do we want to go straight to Pete? Okay, Pete Ramsell is here, and Pete is a consultant with Holden uh, Communities, LLC, and uh, you've heard from him before, so phase two, here we go, Pete. Thank you. It's good to be here again, uh, and I appreciate your time, and I heard a couple times that I need to be, uh, hurry up a little. <laughs> Are you finished yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, I'll do that, uh, and I'll jump right into the significance of phase two. Uh, as you know, I was here last year, and uh, you were kind enough to uh, bless it. We took it to MHDC, obviously didn't get approved or we wouldn't be back. But we listened to MHDC, and uh, they have a point system now, and it's all about points. And if you get the points, you get funded, and if you don't get the points, you don't. And it, it typically, uh, a developer who's been doing this for a number of years can get to 130 points. So somehow, some way, you have to get over uh, over that hurdle. Uh, we think we're at 140 points right now, and so we're feeling very good about the the application. One of the ways we did it, and and probably the most significant change from last year, is we had four plexes and six plexes last year. We're doing duplexes this year. And there's a twofold reason for that. Uh, I think it's something that you as a city uh, would probably prefer, the duplexes. Uh, more importantly, and I hate to word it that way, but more importantly, I'll, I'll word it this way, more importantly to the point system, it literally gives us five more points because we can convert those duplexes at the end of the compliance period to tenant ownership. And we had this program a long time ago and uh, basically MHDC did away with it, uh, basically after I left. Uh, they decided this year to bring it back and it is literally worth five points. And the way it works, quite frankly, is the tenant lives there and for every year that they live there, they're entitled to a discount. And at the end of the compliance period, which is a 15 year compliance period, there's an appraisal done. And so they get that, there will be the appraisal, and for every year that they've lived there, they get a certain discount, basically about 5%, and at the end of that 15-year uh, period, uh, they've got a substantial equity in, in the proposal, in the project, in their unit. And then what we, we've done in the past, and, and I say we because I can't get MHDC out of my life, I was such a part of it for so long. Then we provided what's called a first-time homebuyer program. And the significance of that is that first-time homebuyer program comes with a lower interest rate than you can get conventionally to from any bank or any saving, savings and loan. I'm really dating myself with that, savings and loan. Uh, so you get a better interest rate, and more importantly, they'll pay your down payment assistance, and that's all built in. It doesn't cost anything extra. So we literally have a tenant who's hopefully lived there for 10 years, let's say. Uh, they get, uh, again, five points for every year that they've been there. They've been there 10 years. They got a substantial equity build up. They've got this uh, down payment assistance, and they've got a below market rate interest. Uh, and it's worked very, very well in the past. It was one of my favorite programs. Not that I wrote it, but it still was one of my, my favorite programs. Um, so that's what we're offering this year. And uh, we, we think it's, it's something that maybe you guys can even be excited about or more excited about. And we're gonna roll the dice, spend the money, and submit this uh, application again. And again, uh, 130 points, but we think we're at 140, and we truly believe uh, that we're gonna get it funded this year. 
same development team as in the past, same people that did phase one. There will be a different uh, general contractor. Bruce, you'll probably smile on that. Uh, he no longer works with us. Uh, but we've got somebody now that has been building uh, similar products, uh, MHDC uh, apartments, uh, probably has done 100 uh, developments. So lots and lots of experience, knows what he's doing, and uh, we'll do a better job this time. Uh, 46 units, 32 two bedrooms, 14 three bedrooms. Uh, I'm thinking that let me let me look at a note because I don't want to tell you wrong. I've got some market rate units. Uh, I'd, I actually have uh, four market rate units, meaning there's no income restriction at all. I've got eight at 80% of median income, and I've got the balance of them basically at 60% of median income. Uh, that 80% median income is probably $43,000. The 60% is probably at $32,000, $33,000. The market rate is obviously there is no income limit on those. So we got a, a real good mix. Uh, we got a lot of uh, higher income on purpose because we knew you wanted that. Uh, we want it for the community. We want it to be a, an economic mix. We're still calling it uh, economic development because it's workforce housing. And that's where we get to do the market rate units and the 80% units. Uh, we know there's a need for that in your community. We believe that strongly. Uh, we'll go back out and market it to the industrial, the people in the industrial park and all around. So briefly, that's, that's my story. Sorry I took too long. <laughs> How many total units? I'm sorry? How many total units are there? Uh, 46. <laughs> Any other questions? So when they buy their unit, <coughs> well, assuming somebody buys their unit, there's an adjacent unit, obviously, with a duplex. Yes. What? It doesn't matter. That still stays in the rental. Yeah, it'll, it'll stay in a rental program. We'll continue to to manage it until we get a buyer. Once we've marketed to all the tenants. They get to stay there. There's no way we're going to kick anybody out. We can't kick anybody out, to be honest, but we wouldn't kick anybody out. But as soon as they vacate their unit, we can open it up to anybody that has an income of less than 80% of median income. So that's that's pretty significant. Anything else? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, looking for approval of minutes, May 28th. So we make a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> Weber? Yes. Yes. Miller? Yes. Hey. Yes. Uh, resolutions. First up, we have bill number 2024-27, a resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, supporting the LIHTC application for the Teal Lake Phase 2, reading by title only and passage. Mr. Slagle. Yes, Your Honor. Um, if uh, you would like us to go through the presentation, we can, or if you've heard enough about what it is, we can move on, whichever you would like. Chris wants to go through it again, I think. <laughs> I move for a reading of bill number 2024-27. Second. Weather? Yes. William? Yes. No? Yes. Hey. Yes. Bill number 2024-27, resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, supporting the LIHTC application for Teal Lake Phase 2. I move for passage of bill 2024-27. Second. Weather? Yes. William? Yes. No? Yes. Hey. Yes. Yes. Bill number 2024-28, a resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, adopting all aspects pertaining to the City of Mexico and the Aldrain County Multi-Jurisdictional multi Hazard Mitigation Plan in the effort to become a disaster-resistant community, reading by title only and passage. Mr. Schlegel. Yes, Your Honor. As, uh, as a part of the, the, the state, we are required by each county to pass a hazard mitigation plan. What this basically means is that we're trying to put in place a plan in case of natural disasters in regards to how we can mitigate uh, some of the problems that we might come from it and how, in essence, we would deal with some of those things. 
Um, Drew is out sick this evening, so pinch hitting tonight is uh, Greg Sewell uh, with our engineering department. And uh, as we spoke this morning, he'd be glad to present it, but he indicated that all questions will go to Bryce, <laughs> to Chief Mesco. <laughs> I'll do my best. Good evening, Council. As we just talked about, hazard mitigation plans required for nearly 1,000 cities and 114 counties in Missouri for all federally, federally declared disasters. Under the new rules for federal funding, local governments will be required to have a federal emergency management agency approved hazard mitigation plan in place. Under this initiative set forth by Missouri State Emergency Management Agency, the Missouri Association of Councils of Government <coughs> excuse me, agreed to meet the challenge of developing county and city plans throughout the state. <coughs> the intent of the Regional Planning Commission in Missouri is to be service to their member counties and cities and to bring an organized approach to addressing a, a broad cross-section of area-wide issues. They are also available to assist the member entities in coordinating the needs in the area of the state and federal agencies or with private companies or other public bodies. Through Siemens scope of work, Audrey County contracted the Mark Twain Regional Council of Governments and participated fully in the, in the preparation of the plan. Once this plan is approved, <coughs> excuse me, Audrey County and cities within the county will be eligible for future mitigation assistance with, from FEMA and will be able to be more effectively carry out mitigation activities to lessen their adverse impact future disasters from Audrey County. The primary role for regional planning commission is to provide a technical staff capable of providing sound advice to membership and working for coordination of various planning and infrastructure needs from uh, various counties and cities as appropriate. The staff of the Mark Twain Regional Council of Governments prepared the Audrey County National Hazard Mitigation Plan, which serves the counties of Marion, Rouse, Pike, Shelby, Monroe, Audrey County, Macon, and Randolph as well as incorporated cities within those counties. Participation of local governing bodies and stakeholders is critical to successful mitigation. As part of the process, staff met in Farber to discuss the hazard mitigation plan in our group setting with other jurisdictional representatives. Attendees included us, excuse me, Audrey County, Village of Benton City, Vanderbilt <coughs> Village, Village of Rush Hill, City of Farber, City of Ladonia, City of Martinsburg, Community R6, School District, Mexico 59 School District, and City of Mexico. This plan will not deal with those events that happen on a daily basis. This plan will deal with natural disasters and pandemics, the occurrence of any disaster create a need for um, call suffering that uh, for assistance and requires a commitment of government resources. The mission of Audrey County Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan is to promote a sound public policy designed to protect citizens, critical facilities, and our infrastructures, private property, and the environment from natural hazards. This can be achieved by increasing public awareness, documenting the resources of risk redu reduction and loss prevention, and identify activities guide to the county towards building a safer, more sustainable community. Staff recommends the council adopt all aspects pertaining to the City of Mexico and the Audrain County Multi-Jurisdiction Hazard Mitigation Plan in an effort to become a disaster-resistant community and proceed with reading by title only and passage <coughs> for the attached resolution. I'm ready for his questions. You said too many words. <laughs> Can't remember what you were. I move for reading of bill number 2024 28. Second. Yes. 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 Bill number 2024-28, resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, adopting all aspects pertaining to the City of Mexico, Missouri and, and its Audrain County multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan and the effort to become a disaster-resistant community. I move for passage of Bill number 2024-28. Second. Yes. 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 All right. Need to pay the bills. Make a motion to pay the claims. Second. Yes. 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 
Uh, council comments. We'll start with uh, Councilman Williams. You got exciting news, so go ahead and oh. share. Yeah. Well, if you hadn't heard, which I'm sure everybody has, our uh, academic team went to Washington D.C. this weekend, and they finished second overall in the country on small school nationals. Wow. And then my son uh, was won the award for top player in the whole country all this past weekend. So, um, so he's excited. They probably are on a plane. They're on a plane home right now. So they're bringing some hardware back to Mexico, Missouri. So that's that's good for our community. I'm proud of them. Proud of the teachers that helped them and all the people that have supported them in the community. While I have Pete here, though, could I have one question? Um, I don't know. I, I, I've got some kids that live, their parents live there and they go down there. Does anybody else know the lights there flash <laughs> all the time at night? I don't know I don't know if that's a thing or if that's a problem or I'm like if somebody had one of those sensitivity to that because I pull in there sometimes take kids home or pick them up and I'm like what is going on down the street? <laughs> Looks like Christmas down there. Right. So, Thank you. Well I appreciate that and that's all I got. Thank you. Councilman Miller. Nothing new. Okay. Councilman Webb. Congratulations to the academic team, your son. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess there will be some people in town this week for the pageant. Yeah. Say hi to them, I guess. I don't know what we're supposed to do. They get a whole <laughs> bunch of McCaffey drinks in the morning. So. Yeah. <laughs> get them all caffeined up in the morning. Yeah. So. Right. Go on. That's a good thing. So, Mr. Slagle. I want to make an introduction tonight to you, Council. We have a new Park and Recreation Director, Mr. Chad Unterreiner. He comes to us from Marshall, Missouri, but prior to that, he spent uh, some time in the Recreation Department down in Cape Girardeau and in Perryville. Um, he's got his master's degree from William Woods, and uh, he's got an education background, but uh, uh, Steve, he chose Park and Rec over teaching. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Another Chad, though? Another Chad. We call him the new Chad. The, the new Chad. Chad. The new, the new Chad. 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 <laughs> Chad. What's your name again, new Chad? <laughs> <laughs> Does he like dog parks? I guess. Yeah, he's like already started talking about it. Uh, ah, okay. yeah, there you oh, go. Yeah. He, he's got to work on a plan already. Ah, man, you're our hero now. <laughs> you can have your own name now. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. We appreciate it, and uh, Pete appreciate, uh, of course, trying to get affordable housing for citizens. Of Mexico, so wish you luck on that. Um, public comments. Uh, if anybody in the audience wants to come up, you get three minutes. Go to the podium, state your name and address, and we'll hear what you have to say. Okay, Casper. They're gonna take. They got to be one at a time, though. Right? One yeah. at a time. Yeah. Uh, Hold down with that. Absolutely. Uh, now I believe we need. Uh, I move to, we adjourn into executive session pursuant to Missouri statute. 610-021, litigation and legal advice. Second. Weber? Yes. Williams? Yes. 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 Yes.